All right, everybody, welcome to the first ever Luxury Kitchen Summit. I'm, I'm so excited uh, to have five people that will have it, will help you determine what you're going to buy in the next week or next 10 years. And let me let me give you some brief introductions and we'll get right into it. Jan Heck is the president and CEO of Mill USA and behind successful restructuring both in US and Canada. Mill is the largest family-owned premium appliance store. They've launched a lot of revolutionary products in the last few years. He's also the chairman of the NKBA. Interesting fact, Jan and I used to talk about what we would do for our careers during those dark months of the pandemic. I remember him saying, you know, what am I else am I going to do? I've worked for me all my life. I, I, I said, I just destroyed a 97-year-old family company. Alessia Sheffield is the president of Blue Star Appliances behind the renaissance of the industry's hottest brand. Blue Star has introduced its new dual fuel range this year, building on its refrigerator and ventilation lines. Interesting fact, she went to Yale, but she went to Yale University and then graduated the Harvard MBA. Hard to know who you rooted for in that football game. Blue Star is another American family-owned company out of Pennsylvania. Steve Trulask is the owner of the world's largest family-owned American commercial refrigerator company. He's developed a unique line of residential refrigerators with colors, glass doors, and commercial refrigeration with a nice soft design edge. In fact, Steve is a St. Louis Blues fan, and as a Bruins fan, his questions may be a lot tougher than he thinks. And per Anne Priscelli is the vice president of marketing for Middleby Residential, which owns La Cornu, the artisanal French kitchen brand. She was the director of La Cornu for, for North America for 14 years until 2018. Interesting fact, she owns a design collaborative in Nashville where my sister lives. It once had a bright orange La Cornu range. I said go volunteers, but she tells me it's Hermes. Is it Hermes or Hermes? I, Hermes. I, I have a ja I have a six year old. For me, it's Jackie and Jenny. So anyway, Jennifer Badley is a is a vice president product manager at Fisher Bakehill, known for its double drawer dishwasher. Fisher Bakehill manufactures some of the most unique luxury appliances in the world. Interesting fact: Jennifer was once the product manager for Oakley and worked there for twenty three years. So good question to ask is: Can you still get us discounts on some cool Oakley shades? Here's the format: what We're going to do is presentations. Um, you have two and a half minutes and I'm going to ask you questions for two and a half minutes. We'll follow up with a round of questions for everybody and then we'll end with what you guys see as the trends for the next few years. First up is Blue Star. You're on the clock. Hey, thanks, Steve. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Um, let's get going here. Okay. You guys can see my screen? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. All right, Blue Star. So as Steve um, mentioned, we are a fit, proudly a family-owned business based in Reading, Pennsylvania. And um, we've, we've built an extensive lineup of, of cooking, ventilation, and refrigeration products. But we're very excited that we're finally, uh, finally launched and are, are shipping our new dual fuel range. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. Sorry, I'm not moving my screen. Um, one second. Oh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So what is unique about our new dual fuel range? First of all, our burner, which I'm going to get into, it's our new X8 burner. So this is our, our take on our heritage, heart heritage eight point star shaped burner that we've made into a sealed format and introduced revolutionary levels of control and power, which I'll talk about in a second. Secondly, this range is completely customizable. So talk about making something your own, um, infinite number of colors, trims, ways to, to fit it out and, and make it really unique. And finally, it's made to order. So it's completely handcrafted in our, in our factories in outside of Reading, Pennsylvania and um, designed just for you. So let's get into the burner. So this is our new X8 burner. And what's really unique about this is the level of control and versatility that you see here. So it goes up to 25,000 BTUs and every single burner goes down to a warm of 500. So you picture, you know, picture an eight burner stove, you would see eight burners at that very, very low um, 500 BTUs, 140, 152 points and three times the flame distribution of any other sealed burner. I'm just gonna see it in action if it will play for us. Here we go. Just to give you a sense of how it has 
So that's a little take on that video. Um, this X8 burner is paired with um, some very high performing true convection ovens that fit our signature full commercial baking sheets you see here. So lots of room to make fabulous dinners for friends and families. We have an innovative touch, uh, touch screen control that tilts out. So it's really easy and, and ergonomic, eight cooking modes and an environmentally friendly 90 minute express cleaning mode. Um, infinitely customizable. So obviously classic stainless, thousand plus colors, and then a way to trick it out with trim and colored knobs. Um, this range pairs beautifully with the rest of our collection. So full, full range of designer hoods, column and built-in refrigerators, we're, we're showing it here with, um, with our columns. So that's the new dual fuel range. What else is, is hot at Blue Star? Um, clearly color. So we believe fundamentally that color is here to stay. You can see here, I mean, it, you see color in all sorts of kitchen designs these days. It's not just contemporary, it's, it's traditional and, and everything in between. We see a trend of old colors like yellows and blues, but, but, being, be, but being reinvented into new settings and new hues that, that really feel very fresh and modern. We just launched our winter color collection, although it's the Northeast and it's like 60 degrees in February. So maybe we should call it the winter spring collection, but this is a beautiful, very neutral, very rich, calming um, collection of, of seasonal colors here. And we also at the Kitchen at Bath show introduced our 2023 color of the year, wine red. It was selected by a really cutting edge San Francisco designer named Naz Nazwala. And this is just a, um, a, a very rich, beautiful, um, surprisingly neutral finish that, that looks great in a, in a variety of kitchens. Okay, um, that was very good, running a little over, but- Sorry, Steve. <laughs> no, 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 you're excited about, you, as you should be, about your new dual fuel. So we'll cut down the questions a little bit. Okay. What's the most unique range you've ever shipped? Most unique, you got a thousand colors. Yeah, I mean, for sure, the, I'm not going to say it was my favorite, but the most unique range that I've ever seen was a range that had was purple, it was painted purple, and then the knobs were in a rainbow um, of, of colors. So that was, that was pretty crazy. I didn't even believe it until I walked the, the factory floor and saw it. Sounds like, sounds like something you sold to Prince. Yeah, um, something like that. Will you start manufacturing larger induction ranges? Like, yes, we we see um, a lot of momentum in, in induction, as I'm sure everybody else does as well. And um, our customers definitely want larger cooktops. So we're very focused on on giving delivering that option. Mm -hmm. Now, will you convert all your ranges to the uh, X8 burner or even the platinum series in gas? Um, we're not going to convert everything. I mean, our, our, our heritage open burner has a, has a very unique and, and loyal following. So we're always going to offer that, but we're going to figure out where else to put this in the lineup for sure. All right. Fantastic. Thank you. That was excellent. All right, Jan, you're next. Hello. Hello. Well, well uh, Steve and uh, everybody on the panel, welcome. I'm actually in our showroom in Miami. So, uh, and I'm ready to go because I just got myself a nice, um, Miele coffee. <laughs> uh, so first nice of all, product, you know, <laughs> so actually, you know, uh, kudos uh, uh, to True. You're the the largest uh, refrigeration company in the U.S. Uh, unbelievable mm -hmm. heritage. And similar to Miele, we are actually celebrating next year our 125th anniversary. Still 100% family owned. Actually, we are the largest global appliance company still in family hands. The Zinc and the Miele family own this uh, really iconic brand. So, Steve, you gave me two and a half minutes, so I have to make sure that I'm going fast. Now my clicker doesn't work. <laughs> so, but I have help here, so which is perfect. So, we yeah. want to just uh, spend a couple of minutes on, you know, the uniqueness of what we uh, offer here in the U.S. And my IT guys are still trying to, you know, move my presentation forward. We are still at the Imobessa. So I can talk a little bit about our showroom here. I have beautiful appliances here, but uh, now we have some technical issues here. Steve, we did the 45 minutes uh, uh, check. You were, there, you were there first and you had- I tell you, I tell you, I was first here, but- Do you, uh, wanna, do you, wanna, you wanna figure it out? Oh, here we go. So we're all good now. We're all good. We're all good. No, no, we're perfect. Okay, so highlight uh, for North America was last year, the introduction of our generation 7,000 kitchen appliances. 
uh, various uh, lines uh, focusing on design, on sustainability. So we launched that last year at KBIS and we showed it a couple of weeks ago in Vegas as well. What's unique about it is we have a very unique fleet design. So different options, different colors, which makes our generation 7,000, I believe very unique in our marketplace. In terms of technologies, I believe, you know, one of my favorite appliances are our coffee machines. And, you know, this is the living proof here. Um, our uh, coffee systems have a number of really cool features. One of them I like the most, we have three different coffee bean selectors. So you can have different flavors, you know, from, you know, Araba beans. Uh, and if you don't like um, uh, specialty beans, you can also have your decaf. Plus you see it in the picture here, <laughs> We actually sell our own uh, beans, so that makes it even more unique. And then one of the biggest pain points for coffee machine users is cleaning and descaling. So we have auto clean and auto descale, so the machine does it for you. I think that's um, a really, really big uh, customer consumer benefit. When it comes to other technologies, one of them I like, I mean, all of our appliances uh, are connected and the latest innovation is food view. So the consumer can actually see what's going on in their ovens um, and uh, you can use your iPhone to check on it. So I think that's very unique as well. One of our biggest sellers in, in, in the world and especially here in the US are dishwashers. Um, I think we, we set new benchmarks. We are probably leading uh, in that category and we just uh, launched our new power this system, you can see a, a, a sample here. So that basically gives you one month supply and it automatically dispenses the right amount of detergent depending on uh, the soil content of your dishes. So also uh, super nice and useful technology. And then last but not least, um, laundry. I mean, we are actually uh, a laundry company. That's how Miele started um, their business. And also they are, you know, leading edge with our twin dose technology. I have a, a cartridge here. So again, automatic dosing and then our unique heat pump technology for our dryers. And last but not least, induction. I think we're probably going to talk about that today. That's a, a big trend um, actually coming uh, a lot from Europe. Um, and um, I think that's the future of cooking. So definitely something we're probably going to cover today as well. And I believe, I'm not sure, I didn't have my, my watch going, but I'm, I, I think I'm on time, Steve. I well, hope. you're at 426, but we're going to give you a second because, and you're the guy with the Thank IT, you. you had a professional IT department. So, I know. hey, listen, I have a, a couple of questions. Uh, you know, first of all, my, my, um, my sister makes a blueberry latte on your, on, your, on your coffee machine. I actually drive for out of the way. It's fantastic. But in terms of um, the G7000, Right. You know, you had Thermador with star speed, a 20 minute wash, 20 minute dry. Are you going to come out with something like that or is it just going to be for the pro line? Well, I think, you know, we have the pro line, but, you know, our regular uh, uh, domestic dishwashers, the fastest cycle is 58 minutes. And I think that's pretty fast. And the result is, you know, sparkling clean and dry. So, you know, if you want to go into faster cycles, you know, you have to look at, you know, two pumps. You're going to make some sacrifices on the energy, on the water mm -hmm. consumption. So I think. We're in the sweet spot when it comes to speed and also performance. All right. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Trulask. You're next. Thank you. Thank you, Steve. It's great to be a part of your uh, day here in panel, and we really appreciate it. So uh, we just came back from Kitchen Bath Show in Las Vegas a couple weeks ago, and it, it was one of our best kibis ever. We had uh, two major introductions. Uh, the number one that... Uh, really caught the floor. And of course, we're not moving forward. And I have the whole true IT department in this space. I know, I know you do. <laughs> and we just recovered. Okay. So we launched the new 30 inch um, bottom freezer refrigerator at Cabus. Obviously this size is gonna be great for condos, smaller locations. But you know, one of the trends that we really see that we really like is that our customer, our clientele is putting these units together and we have a, a unifying uh, kit uh, that goes with integrating 
these, uh, these units. So um, you can put a freezer with a glass door, uh, with a wine cooler. I have a picture coming up here, but this is really one of the trends that lends itself to this organization piece that we'd love to take to our clientele that comes from our commercial roots. So it does have a built-in ice maker. We've made a commitment to built-in ice makers with all of our uh, bottom mount refrigerated freezers. So that's another development. Um, beyond that, of course, our whole story uh, similarly is, is colors. About 10 years ago, we made the decision to invest in a powder coat system. And I don't think we really quite knew what we were getting our, ourselves uh, into, but the good news is we realized that the residential world wants differentiation. We don't do panels like other manufacturers do. So we wanted to offer something different. And this was our story. This is what our capability is, is this incredible curation of uh, colors that we offer, standard colors, and then of course, custom hardware. Um, but one of the big other new developments that we presented for the first time at the Kitchen Bath Show was our automotive paint quality uh, colors. So there we showed a British racing green metallic. This is identical to whatever uh, Range Rover, uh, Mercedes-Benz, Audi, you name it. We can replicate any color from a car company, or if you wanna give us a completely custom color, we can do anything. And the automotive paint system is an outstanding system for quality paint going on in your refrigerator. So here's what I was talking about as far as this uh, integration of um, the header panel across the top here. So here's four individual units, wine cooler on the right, glass door bottom out uh, refrigerator freezer, 30 inch, standard refrigerator freezer, they're on the, the next one to the left, and then another wine cooler. So the versatility that you can put into your kitchen, and really what we see is that our clientele loves this organization, the organization that we know would come from with our commercial business, from the chefs that we work with around the world from uh, you know Boston to Berlin. I mean, we have great relationships with these folks that are doing the real deal in, in the kitchens and how they think about their kitchen. So the versatility, the colors, uh, this is really something that uh, we're getting a great response to. We also have our under counters, uh, the ADA sizes with the articulating hinge. Again, this versatility, you know, we make our own ice machines. Very few people can say that. So our lead times are great. Drawer systems, wine coolers, again, this mix match and then the integration. You can put panels, remember, on our under counters. We can't do it on, on, the, on, the, on the uprights, but the bottom, the under counters, we can. So we can match anything you want. You want color, you want wood panels, uh, you know, we're your, your source. So really appreciate the time. I probably went over, but- uh, It's all right, we'll, we'll, we'll ask less questions. I'll tell you, I loved, I love the, um, I love the racing green. Um, and, and the question is, how do you get in color? Because I, I went on your commercial site and I, I didn't see really much color there. What was the decision behind going such bold colors? And, and by the way, if I have a bar, I'm taking that yellow fridge behind you. I, I think that thing's outstanding. But how did you get into color? So um, this, uh, this is about that we used to use at our commercial site is laminated vinyl ends and we decided we could save money by investing in a powder coat system so really it was a pure economic play for our commercial side and like i said a little earlier we didn't quite realize we were buying this thing that was allowing us to do all these colors and to your point the commercial side we're just getting colors out they're a little more sensitive on price than than your customer our customer but we said we've got to have something different we just had and so then we saw hey we have this capability inside the walls of truth and that's really where it emanated from. I love those hinges. I love those 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 hinges. They're great. Thank you very much. Okay, Bishop Pekel, Jennifer Bradley. All right, let me share my screen. Okay, can you see it? Hopefully. Yep. Okay, perfect. Um, so thanks for for having me. Super honored to be here. I want to share a little bit with your audience about Fisher & Paykel. We're a brand that hails from New Zealand, so quite a bit away from the U.S. market. Um, but our philosophy is about designing for a changing world. So we really consider when we create our products, focused on human connection, focused on the urbanization. It's really changing the way we built our kitchens, we build our houses. Um, sustainability is responsibility of all of us. And so how we create our products, but also how the products are used in the home is really important. 
healthy living, of course, is a new luxury now more than ever. And then technology and technology is a very purposeful is really what we're focused on. Um, so consumers, they're really changing and there's really a focus on respecting food, evolving cooking styles and healthy living. So when we look at what the customer is going to do with our products, we take all of that into consideration. So a couple of new products to share with you. Steam is really a new way of cooking. And so we, uh, we know steam enhances the natural flavors. We know it locks the nutrients. We know that there's many different steam functions that you can use. So we've launched our new Series 11 steam combination oven. And within that oven, you have 23 different functions. So it's really a multifunctional tool. You can do sous vide, you can do five different steam cycles, or you can do regular functions for convection or even air fries within that product. So it's a great multifunctional tool product. And when we think about our consumers wanting to cook in different ways, this gives them a great product to work with. Another product that we're launching this, this quarter actually is our new triple zone refrigeration. So this is a columns refrigeration. And the beauty of this is it has three different zones on their freezer side. So you can choose from chill mode in a zone, soft freeze in a zone. Soft freeze is actually great for storing meats and then regular freezers. And you can have three independent zones going on at one time on the freezer side. And the same with the refrigeration side, you can have fridge in the top zone, and then you can choose from pantry, fridge, or chill. Pantry is great for storing your fruits and vegetables because it preserves them for longer. And we know a lot of customers, a lot of us, throw a lot of food away because it spoils really quickly. So pantry mode is perfect for preserving your food for longer. And it's great because you can get these three different zones working. Chill is great for chilling wine if you want to chill beverages and it doesn't over chill it. And um, so this gives a lot of versatility. The other thing is we have an active smart technology within this product. So if you have a family that has a lot of children and they're in and out of the refrigerator, it's going to adjust the temperature to maintain those right zones. Or if you're just a couple that's barely in and out of their freezer, freezer or refrigerator, it does the same thing. It, it adjusts the usage so it maintains the perfect temperature across the three different zones. So this is launching for us in April of this year. And then I'd be remiss not to talk about induction and cooking. Um, induction has been part of our portfolio for a long time, but we're excited to announce our, our new modular cooktop. What's beautiful about this is for people who are customizing homes, especially in the luxury sector, they can create their own cooktop. You can have a teppanyaki grill, you can have an induction, any size you want. You can even have the downdraft induction in there. So this gives a versatility of customizing with your different um, cooking surfaces that you're looking for. So that's uh, that's what's going on at Fisher and Paykel, and I did my best to be in the two and a half minutes. Hey, I think it did pretty well at three twenty one. Anyway, um, I got a couple questions. Like, um, hires the owner of GE, and and these are turnaround guys. They've done a great job at GE and Fisher Bake Hell. Do you do you think you'll share resources with Monogram and maybe Cafe? So you know, as being part of a big giant, we're always going to look for efficiencies. But what's really important for us is never compromise our brand ID or our what our technologies are within the product. So we stay true to that, but we're going to find efficiencies, whether it's being service or some of the back end stuff, for sure. I've got like a backwards question to ask you. Uh-oh. <laughs> you're, known for the, you're known for the double drawer dishwasher. Going to buy, sell a normal dishwasher. What's the idea behind that? Yeah, I mean, we're very proud of our dish drawer platform. I mean, that's that was really a user-driven innovation that drove that product. But we also realized that our cost, there are customers out there that want a, a drop-down. And so expanding our portfolio, while dish drawer will always be our primary pride and joy, having a great dishwasher was important to reach more customers. Totally agree. Totally agree. So who is the Fisher? How do you how does Fisher Pickle compete against you know all the people here and the other? giant manufacturers as part of hire? As far, well, so it's really focused on our customer. We're really focused on that future user. And so we want to be deep with our customers and very, we're look, you know, our customers that are attracted to us are typically designers. We see a lot with analytics that designers are coming to us. A younger customer typically comes to us. Someone who's looking for something more modern and contemporary and um, we really fit in that zone. And we <laughs> we tap into designers a lot to understand who their clients are as we design our products as well. But staying true to who we are is really important. Like that steam oven. Thank you very much. That was great. Um, Anne, you're up next. Okay, hello. Keep going. All right. 
Thank you, um, everybody, for joining. Thank you, Steve, for inviting me. Um, excuse my background. I'm uh, broadcasting from our Chicago showroom, which is very much a construction site. So hoping that it's no drill saw kicks up while I'm speaking. But um, talking today about probably um, the brand considered the most luxurious in the kitchen space, and that's La Cornu. Um, La Cornu is a company that was founded in Paris 115 years ago. And they actually um, created the first gas oven for the home, the first convection oven, back when they were lighting the streets of Paris with gas street lamps. Um, the engineer and founder of La Cornu thought about controlling the gas flow for street lamps and how you could apply that to your cooking versus open flame. Um, from there, the first La Cornu was born. And in the past century plus, it has evolved into um, a global brand. I'm very proud that the U.S. is by far the biggest market worldwide. That was not the case 20 years ago, but um, the American consumer has learned to just fall in love with it, understand the, the benefits. So um, this is a, some photos that were taken in our factory. A lot of people think it is going to be a beautifully sleek, pristine factory. This is not Photoshop. It is absolutely charming. We use the word charming. Uh, it's in Tellier, about 30 minutes uh, north of Paris. Um, it is true, every Chateau range is handcrafted, custom to order. So there is no inventory. Every range is designed by the end consumer, the designer, in terms of the size, color, trim, cooktop configurations, whether you want induction, gas, uh, griddle, burners, um, barbecue, et cetera. And then it is built to order. So they actually print out the order with all the required parts, and then that uh, artisan walks around the factory and builds it absolutely fascinating to watch. And we've had clients come over and see their specific range being built and it's just really neat. So here's a couple of photos just showing a specific range being built. The image on the top left was actually that first La Corny range that I referenced. It was about the size of a big US mailbox. Um, and th these are modern chateaus today. And the image on the bottom left, they actually inscribe a, a, the ID plate with either the homeowner's name, the estate's name, sometimes the dog or the children's name, a lot of cute things. Um, people just get to see that that range was built for them. Every range is inspected, flown over on Air France, and then custom delivery with bike glove into the homeowner's uh, place. So this is just a snapshot of what La Cornu looks like today from ranges. We've evolved into Wall Manor Rich Histories, which is a great auxiliary product. Um, and then we also have our more entry level product, which is the Cornu Fay. So that piece is manufactured in bulk in predetermined colors and trims. So we've got 12 colors, three trim combinations in two different sizes. So we have a 36 and a 44 inch. Those are European sizes as well. Um, and that is a phenomenal seller. So those start around you know, $10,000 US. Um, you'll notice a lot of uh, variation in the style here. So we, we say with Law Cornu, anything is possible. If you can dream it, we can build it. We've seen a lot of crazy things over the years. Um, we have matched um, our antique tile, we've matched um, sports cars, we've matched uh, the wife's eye. So as long as it's feasible and we can get you all to approve it, we can build it uh, and we have done so. So it's it's nice that no two La Cornu's are ever the same. Um, First and foremost, though, we are about our cooking. So typically, ranges are going to see the, the gas burners in the far left, where you get your direct heat, searing, sauteing, and boiling. And then our signature piece is our French top or the plaque. The French call it the piano, where you're moving pots in and out. Um, just some more peek at some of our details, so you can just see some of the variety of the product. And then the Cornifay collection, we just announced four new colors about a week or two ago. And I will say the order desk is very busy. So um, we're happy to see that the series uh, new color collections has taken off. And then I'll just finish with um, some collaborations that we've done. Ferris Rafale is a designer out of um, Canada who did this specific project for Drake. And we now offer this in our collection as the most elite at 125,000 plus. And then we have collaborations with Martin Lawrence Ballard and Suzanne Kassler, who have interpreted their versions of the perfect La Cornu palette. So I did run long. I apologize. I thought I spoke fast, but apparently not fast enough. It, it, don't worry. It's 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 you guys are all excited about your brands. I can't believe you. You know, I said I said two and a half minutes with with the idea that all of you ran over. You did. It's good. <laughs> what is the uh, what's the um, we anticipate that here? What was the uh, what is the craziest crazy? What's the most unique range? you guys have ever made? I know about the F1 fiber range. Oh, yeah. In, in um, yes. So we've done the range out of all carbon fiber, which was absolutely stunning. I mean, there have been a lot of over the years, artisans love to print out pictures, take pictures of what the, their favorites. 
The one I remember is the most memorable is the consumer actually designed that entire range out of brush brass panels instead of stainless. It was all brush brass, all trimmed in brush brass. It was completely over the top. They had it lacquered, so it wasn't going to patina. And it, it just was like this massive altar sitting in the middle of the kitchen. It was stunning. I mean, not for everyone, but really, really one of the one kind. And that kitchen was just, uh, it's just so memorable. One last question. You may want to plead the fifth on this. French, <laughs> French company recently acquired by an American one. How's yes. that? Work? Uh, it, great, actually. So Middleby um, is a, a big holding company for about 100 commercial brands and 20 residential brands. I would say what it's for us is access to technology, to manufacturing, no, to purchasing power. So um, it's had nothing but upside. We have not really changed anything about the DNA of La Cornue. We've added in some new efficiencies, which has been great, um, but it's it's all been positive. So I'm happy and fortunate. Mm. Well, that was good. Um, I want to I want to ask some follow up questions. The first question I have is uh, to the family owned companies. You know, we're a family owned company too, and, and and the appliance business is brutal. How do you? And I'll give you a minute and a half of this, uh, or two minutes. Um, how do you compete as an American local, or or even as I'm sorry, as a family owned manufacturer? Uh, we'll start with uh, Eliza. Or sure. Yeah, thanks, Steve. Yeah, being family owned is definitely um, something, one of the things we're most proud about at, at Blue Star. And I think it has a lot of advantages, um, especially for a smaller, more kind of innovative player like Blue Star. We're able to um, be really nimble kind of in, in, you know, in all aspects of our, of our business, I'm sure. Sure, my um, I'm sure my counterparts will agree on that, that when, when you're family owned, you have the luxury of not worrying so much about you know the next quarter. Obviously, we're very focused on, on on building a great business, but at the end of the day, we're focused on delivering the best innovation and and being extremely customer focused. And I think that having that support and backing um, from from the family that owns Blue Star makes that all possible. I, I was going to ask how many people have offered to buy Blue Star, but. I'm not sure that would be. I would right. definitely have to plead the fifth on that, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, how about how about you, Steve? I mean, how how is it, especially in your business? I mean, you've got such a huge commercial end, and it's and you've got a a smaller but growing residential. What's it like competing? You know, you guys must run up against some pretty serious manufacturers. What's it like to compete? Well, I would say, quite honestly, we love competing against public companies. They're, they're the easiest ones to go against because they have this short-term thinking and we get to have this very long-term thinking. So it's, we love it when our competitors get bought up by big, huge corporations. Um, so because this long-term, you know, so we, the people thing is just so important, right? So we attract a lot of great engineers, a lot of great people that run the business for us. But again, you know, we are thinking about um, products that sometimes take five years to put them together and you could never do that in a public corporation, um, so. Okay, and Mr. Heck, Mr. I know, Heck, I, I, I know, I, 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 wouldn't, I, I wasn't, I, I, Steve, I wasn't I gotta, thinking, we don't need a PowerPoint for this one. No, 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 we, and, I, and I really appreciate <laughs> that question. And, you know, I kind of uh, have to uh, mirror what Steve just said. Uh, we like to compete and uh, yeah, the appliance space has become more and more competitive and global. And you know there are very fine uh, companies on this call, and there are more out there. And we all pride ourselves, you know, uh, making uh, high quality appliances, good design, all. And you know, we're all good competitors. But it is becoming increasingly more difficult to operate on a global on a global level. And we are actually a global player. Um, Miele's annual sales is close to six billion U.S. dollars. We employ over 22,000 uh, people worldwide. We have 47 subsidiaries. So we are truly a global player. And, um, you know, my favorite line, and I think I shared that with you yeah, uh, a while good. ago, Steve, if you know what's coming now. Yeah. So, you know, we are not an electronic company who makes appliances. Uh, we are actually an appliance company who makes appliances. And, you know, for example, you know, True uh, or, or Blue Star, the same thing there. And, um, but it's increasingly more difficult to compete on a global level. We need 
scalability, we need resources, but family owned, yes, 100%, um, a big advantage. And uh, you missed him last week, but you know, Marcus Miele, the owner of Miele was at Cavis and he was there for four days. He, he, he met our business partners. He was out there. He wants to be part of it. He's uh, extremely authentic. You know, he, he represents the fourth generation. His father actually hired me 23 years ago. <laughs> so, I mean, amazing story. We are, you know, we are hundred percent self-financed. You know, we look at things long-term, you know, it's all about quality innovation. It's about our employees. It's about our people. And I think, that is a huge advantage for us. And we are only one brand. There's only Miele. And uh, that will continue. And uh, that will help us um, to uh, survive the muddy waters and, and be successful and deliver good, high-quality appliances to our customers and also to our business partners like Yale. <laughs> I got to tell you, I, I, I appreciate You know, family-owned companies for everybody on this. Um, you know, you'd subject Wolf, Miele, True, Blue Star, I mean, you guys do great, but I don't know. I don't sense the fear I normally would have if Samsung was like, wants to go in the um, direction where they want to go by buying decor. But hey, I like I like your confidence. But here's one for everybody but but Steve. Gas has already been banned in vertical housing in many cities. How does this affect your product portfolio? Let's start with, um, well, Ian, it probably wouldn't, but um, let's start with you. Does Does... Um, well, we, we've, uh, Lockhart is unique in that we've always had uh, um, both electric and gas options, um, but on the Chateau side, we actually have had induction ranges, all electric induction ranges for a while. We have everything from 24 inches up to 60 inches. So um, we still see on the Chateau side, a lot of the consumers want the gas. They're, they're still tied to it. But on the corner face side, maybe a little bit of that younger consumer, a little bit more conservative fiscally, um, we are nearly at an even split. I mean, gas is still outselling, but we have seen a huge ramp up with the induction ranges of late. Um, so it's been, it's been interesting. We have a sister brand, Aga, where um, the induction ranges actually outsell the gas, which is very interesting. Yeah, that is that is very interesting. Our induction sales were up 29% last year. Yeah. Yeah. How about you, Eliza? You... Um... You're 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 heavy on the on the gas, especially with your new dual fuel. We are. Um, I mean, look, we we currently offer gas and electric options, just like everyone else. Um, but at the end of the day, we you know we're 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 going to be providing consumers with the choices that that they're looking for. And um, you know, it's hard to it's hard to argue the point that perhaps consumer tastes are are changing and evolving. Um, and we're going to be right there at the forefront and providing innovation and induction as well. Okay. How about you, Jen? What do you think? Yeah, I mean, for us, because we come from New Zealand, induction has been a key focus for us for a while. Um, it's very popular in other countries. So it's not really about the bands. It's We've been investing in this. And um, as I just showed, we have a new modular cooktop that's a really big focus for us. And we'll always cater to gas, right? But induction has just great properties too, right? It gives you really great cooking performance, it's energy efficient. So all of that already really feeds into our portfolio. You gonna make a 48? We are, mm. that's all I can say about it. <laughs> no, 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 I, listen, I'm not looking for anything proprietary and you know, I mean, God forbid, yeah. you know. Um, um, how about you, Jan, you're- um, yeah. Well, first of all, you know, <laughs> I, I just wanna deviate a little bit because quite frankly, this is also a political question. And, you know, when legislation gets involved in, in, uh, in these kind of things, you know, uh, we have to see what's going to happen. There's a lot of noise about this movement. And, you know, I'm also the chairman of the NKBA. So we're also monitoring what's going on there. But at this point, I think it's still highly speculative what's going to happen. I think all manufacturers, and we just heard it a minute ago, uh, we are all ready to move to more electric um, and induction uh, appliances. But you know, for the industry, this is gonna be a, a very interesting topic, not just for us as manufacturers, also for retailers. This is a very complex issue. We are looking at serviceability. We have to look at you know, parts and all this stuff, logistics, processes, uh, and then also demand. Uh, and then you know, if and when this new legislation will be implemented, what impact will it have on homeowners, on, on rental properties, and so on and so forth. So you know, this is the beginning of a, conversation we will be having over the next few years. So I'm still kind of, you know, on the uh, on the backside here a little bit, 
uh, we are ready to you know, convert whatever uh, needs to be done in terms of satisfying customer needs. But you know, this is an interesting topic. So we'll see what's going to happen there. How about you guys? You're going you're gonna to make a 36 or 48 induction, you think? Um, first of all, it's also you know, a, a technical question, which I can't really uh, mm -hmm. answer because it, it also depends on the, on the power distribution induction technology is a little bit different. So, you know, to make a statement to move to a 48 or 60 platform, we have to make sure that the performance uh, is going to be guaranteed and longevity and whatnot. Uh, I think there will be a movement. We have to look at it, but what we are going to do, I don't know yet. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, yeah, I mean, it's interesting because uh, it, it's it's just been banned in Boston and vertical housing and, and I know California and a few other places. I think, uh, it's going to be hard we'll to see know what's going to happen. Where all this it's electricity? A, it's, a, it's an interesting topic, and you know, I wouldn't go this way or that way, but uh, you know, obviously, we all will be impacted and affected by that move, good or bad. So let's see what's going to happen. All right, let's talk about color. Um, color has become a big trend. I personally think stainless. Um, it's never going to dethrone stainless because stainless matches. It's easy. It's inexpensive. But what percentage of of sales? Um, and, and do you see, do you see color being, you know, you've got a thousand colors, Steve, you've got a ton of colors and you've got a ton of colors, Jen, you've got some, and then you got Jan, the, um, you know, you've got very high tech stainless. Let's start with Steve. Um, what percentage of your sales is colors and do you see a lot more of it um, nowadays? Color has now reached over 50% of everything that we're shipping. Wow. And that, that's on the, on the upright column side and side by sides. And it's now really coming into the under counters. So all we see is growth and everyone that generally comes into our booth, they react to the, the color uh, equation we offer and the increasing ability to do variety. This automotive paint thing just got a tremendous reaction. Uh, we actually used it at our booth at the commercial show in Orlando last week and did a, a very dark blue metallic for a commercial kitchen. It just wowed. The crowd. I mean, it was such a reaction to that. So uh, it is our differentiation. And the thing with our system internally here at True, it's very efficient. So we can really deliver color very, without huge costs. And I think that's part of our whole story. Eliza, what's your percentage of uh, of color versus stainless? And you've got a thousand colors, but do you, do you, my, my question is, do you sell them and do you sell more than the base black and white? Just take black and white out of it. Or do you sell a lot of the custom stuff? We we absolutely do. I mean, um, to Anne's point, um, you have all the colors, but at the end of the day, matte black and white. And, um, you know, th those are definitely our best sellers, um, surprisingly. But we, I mean, gosh, after that, I mean, you're going to get, we sell a ton of blues, a ton of grays, um, the yellows, the greens. We, we did a green collection kind of this color last year that that um, with a designer that has done really, really well. So I completely agree with Steve. I mean, for from our perspective, it's all upside, all growth. And, um, you know, that's we, we believe it's fundamentally the future of, of appliances. 75% of our, our range sales are in a custom color with Blue Star. And you've got, what, seven types of blue? Florence blue, you know. <laughs> yes, blue, we, blue, yes. Blue, well, I will say after black, white, and stainless blue is the next bestseller, but it's very, very emotional decision on what blue. So you have to have the right blue. We still do a lot of custom blues too. What what percentages? You're probably almost all color, wouldn't you? Yeah, I know you, we've got. Yes. We unfortunately show it in all stainless. Um, we but, can change uh, that. Yeah, we should. Change that. But but <laughs> what percentage of your of your ranges are color? I think if we look at global sales, stainless is probably 10%. And then uh, we actually just did an exercise study in the past four years of sales and stainless was like 9%. And then we've got everything else um, broken down. Uh, so we, we do, we're known for color. I mean, that's really, if you're buying a lot new range, you're probably not trying to have it disappear. You're it's making a statement. So, um, and that, that is, you know, that is the focal point of the kitchen. So we are color, but I will, my favorite is the stainless with the brush brass trim. I think it's just so timeless and beautiful, but you know, to each their own. So that is beautiful. I like black and copper. Yes. Jennifer, you got how many? Three, three finishes. Any plans for more? And what percentage do you sell? And I know you've got red, black, white, and stainless, right? Yeah, I mean, for us, our primary colors, of course, are stainless, black glass. Um, 
So we're, we put color where it makes sense, where it can pop, really collaborating with our design community and what makes sense for the brand. Our aesthetic is a little bit more contemporary and modern. Um, so yes, red red is a good one for us right now. And it's our classic range. It's pops. It tends to be like the centerpiece and then everything else is in black and stainless. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a, for us, it's not our primary story, but it definitely plays a part. You know, had more colors? At this point, we're sticking with what we have for this season and we'll see what next year holds. Fair enough. Last two questions and then you guys are done. Um, Smart is improved. We have colors now. too, Steve. We have colors what? too. We have colors yeah, too. You, I'm sorry. God, you got white. No, you... I actually, I, I want to, you know, honest to God, I have to give a, a big kudos to Steve. When, when you showed before, you know, how you do your, your, your coloring uh, and, and manufacturing in your factory, that's fascinating what you guys are doing there. So I'm, I'm really jealous. So because we are on the same boat, we are more traditional and offer, you know, a various color selection, but more the traditional ones. And I think, you know, on when we look at our manufacturing process, it's probably a little bit more difficult, you know, as a more global player to, you know, be more customized. So if you would ask me right now, you know, what's your percentage of stainless steel uh, on your ranges? The answer is 100% because that's all we sell. But, yeah. you know, in the other areas, we have, we have various, uh, various right. options, right. but again, I think uh, color is here to stay. And especially if you have a, a high quality process uh, like True has and the other ones, then I think uh, it, it really makes sense. But, you know, just to slap a, a color on, which, you know, can be scratched afterwards and this and that, that makes no sense. You have to have a real uh, manufacturing story behind it. And you guys have that. So kudos. I really like what you guys are doing. Yeah. We're, we're jealous of you too. Just to let you know. <laughs> I'm jealous of all of you. But anyway, um, smarts consider smarts improved considerably from when 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 I first started uh, talking about smart in 2021. How far are we from saying Alexa, "Hey, make me lasagna," and having Alexa actually make you lasagna? Um, how far off are we? And let's start with um, well, I know what some of you are going to say already, but let's start with Eliza. What do you think? Um, I think we're pretty far from that, at least for, again, it's all about, you know, who the specific customer, right. That all of our brands have, have slightly different um, folks that we're, we're appealing to and designing products for um, our customers at the end of the day are very proud of their, you know, how they actually cook and take great pleasure in the process. Um, so Alexa making them lasagna would not, would not fit for them. Um, so that's, that's just our, that's our perspective. You know, I, I make that analogy because Janier said to me in 2017, that's what they were working on. Um, but that hasn't happened. I don't think the technology is there. But Anne, any smart tech are going to be in Locker New anytime soon? I mean, stay tuned. Um, I will say we, we do own several companies with some really cutting edge <laughs> technology, both on the residential and the commercial side. So um, for, uh, for Locker New, it'll be about striking the right balance. Um, but we we do have a lot of interest for more um, contemporary forward thinking products. So um, there, there's some things on the table, design table right now. So hopefully we'll be able to reveal that in one of your future summits. Fair enough. Uh, Jennifer, uh, your company owns Smart HQ, which arguably could be one of the best smart platforms, yet you guys don't seem to be on it. Um, and also Smart HQ has got the Heston Q, which I actually have the 110 Heston Q because I have a rental apartment with an old electric range in it. Um, and it, it works actually, but any plans for you guys to go into smart? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, we're actually gearing up to launch that platform with our products to be Wi-Fi connected. I think for us, technology is similar to what Eliza said. It's about purposeful, what our customer wants, what our client's looking for, and less about gimmicky. So um, you know, you'll you'll see some progression for sure for Fisher and Paykel, and we'll make it what we want to make sure that we're enhancing the experience of our client, not just doing technology for technology's sake. So more to come. How about you, Steve? Well, we're working on our own uh, own internal systems for inter internet connected uh, refrigerators and freezers. And um, only thing I can really say to it is I really see some potentially tremendous technologies coming. Um, in freezing, freezing food. And uh, freezing food in a very successful way, I just put it that way. And with that, it might be partial solution to making it very easy 
to cook something very simply and have it come out perfectly. That's, but I'm not on the hot side. So this is with a lot of big grain of salt. You know, you know, I was thinking, you know, um, on the commercial side, it might be good for you. You know, the, the, the plant manager at Whole Foods for them to say, hey, your true is, your true needs repair, repair it before you lose hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of food. But, you know, I, I obviously where we're going to go first. And uh, there's, there's tremendous things. There's things already going out that we're testing in the field on our commercial side. And uh, the whole world is looking forward to this predictive uh, capability that we're going to bring. And uh, I think we're going to bring a very disruptive product to the market. You just got in there smart, Jan. Yeah, well, we, I mean, we, we expanded it and, and it's, you know, it's a must have. And, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about food view and, and our, our Miele app, but I think where a, a big advantage and a big must is for the consumer is on the service side. Um, you know, we have over 200 Miele uh, factory trained technicians here in the US. We have 500 certified service partners here. One of them is EL Appliances. And I think that's the future of, you know, uh, how we service uh, connected appliances. And that's a, a huge benefit, you know, for the consumer, for us, you know, to diagnose, you know, if something happens with your appliance, not just if something is broken, but also, you know, upgrading the appliances, loading new programs, new features. And that's also a sustainability uh, topic. You know, if you, if you buy appliance, you know, we test our appliances for 20 years usage. So you don't want after six years that your technology is outdated and you want maybe uh, new programs. And you know, that technology being connected allows us to you know, um, make sure that these appliances are not just from a, uh, from a functional point of view working for 20 years, but also are upgradable. And I see, I see a huge advantage. And this whole topic about digitalization and technology and connected appliances, I think we can do a separate summit uh, uh, on that one. And, you know, if we do that, uh, we, uh, um, then, you know, it would be also interesting to see what the likes of Amazon and Google are going to do, because as manufacturers, we also depend on, you know, what the big guys are developing. So it's going to be an interesting field. It's here to stay and um, uh, a very important and interesting topic. Yeah, I mean, G and uh, LG are working on smart diagnosis as a, as a as a servicer. And we have thirty four techs. We do one hundred and forty calls a day, and that would be incredibly huge for you know the gold standard for premium customers is getting That's it, the future. Getting you it have right, to have it. Getting it you right the first it. time. All right, we're almost done. So um, I want to ask you guys, what is the one trend or mega trend? in the next that you'll see that people will see um, in the next say one to 10 years, you can pick one is induction, gas, heat pump, color, smart, steam, um, service, whatever it is. And let's, and I, I know you're on a time restriction, so you can go first. I wish I could tell you with confidence because I would apply my talents elsewhere, but um, you know, I, my perspective <laughs> with La Cronu is, um, is a little different. I mean, we're, it's a, you know, like I said, 115 year old brand and we are not trying to be on the leading edge of technology. We are, we have our lane, we stay in it. We think we do a great job with it. And, um, you know, we've been approached to take on refrigeration dishwashers and put a La Cornu label on it. It's just not who we are. We, we just pride ourselves on focusing on really strong, reliable cooking equipment. So I think we'll see some, um, some stride with how service is done and networks with our consumers. Um, the way we interact with our consumers after they own, but from a technology standpoint, you know, we'll obviously keep up with the times, but I'm not sure we'll leapfrog or be leading the trend on anything that's really out there. Kudos to you guys for not relabeling somebody else's product. That's getting that's good integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Jen, what do you think? I think it's, if I think of a mega trend, it's healthy living, right? When you think about the fresher ingredients people want to cook with and how they cook, you know, the whole conversation on gas and ventilation and being healthier. So I think, I think it's around healthy living. And if we all look at our products and what we show up with, this is, this is where we can tap into it in many different levels. Um, and not, not to mention sustainability, like sustainability is all of our responsibility and, and there are consumers expect that of us. So we just have to really pay attention to those things. And that's what we're focused on. Jan, what's what's the megatrend that you see? 
sustainability, sustainability, sustainability. Um, it's end of life. It's it's uh, how do we recycle appliances? How long they're going to last? But also, you know, you just mentioned it: healthy cooking. It's all about the environment. It's sustainability, and then uh, also connectivity. But I think this is a a big movement. Uh, looking what's happening uh, on our planet uh, and uh, major appliances. You know, we we occupy a big footprint, uh, and uh, as as manufacturers, we have a, a big responsibility. Uh, to take care of our world and our environment. So uh, I think this is a big one. And if, if I see what's still going uh, on in our industry, um, I have to say we, we as an industry, we still have a long way to go. Uh, we have huge um, areas of improvement. And uh, that's for me the number one topic. Steve, what do you think? Well, I would uh, say, I don't know that we can really come in to you with a uh, mega trend that goes across a lot of, of the clientele, but the clientele that we're serving, you know, one of the things we see is they want the, um, call it the dirty kitchen that you don't see, and that's where the caterer goes, and then you have the show kitchen, and we're really seeing that, a lot of that, and, you know, we're doing projects where these client clients are buying 30 or 40 true fridges for these multiple kitchens, multiple bars, and then the other thing is with with the predictive uh, intelligence we're gonna bring into these internet connected um, refrigerators of ours, you really are gonna be able to manage all of this. It's not gonna be this hassle that the alarm is going off on the, on the freezer or the ice machine over at the pool house and you know the wife gets upset and they, they just need to change the filter. I think all that is largely gonna go away. Hmm. Eliza, what do you think? Yeah, I for us we see customization as as our as the biggest trend and opportunity. And and what I mean by customization is way beyond colors and 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 metal trims. It's really being able to create a unique kitchen space that represents, you know, your personal, your you and your family's personal designs and tastes, but also just the way that you kind of live your life. Um, so we see that really broadening beyond what. Um, many of us are doing today on, on the color side to actually going much deeper into the appliances themselves and being able to develop truly custom, complete custom spaces. For me, I'll end this um, um, and then I'll say thank you to everybody. Uh, but for me, it's going to be heat pump. I think the way we do washing and drying is going to change radically very soon. Jan, you're already on the on the forefront of heat pump technology but compressor, air exchanger, and now you talk about all-in-ones where you don't have to transfer a washer to dryer. You know, I saved this one because I didn't want to talk about cooking for Drish because you guys could do that way better than me. But I think the laundry room is going to be um, is, is going to be changed radically within three years. Anyway, I, I learned a lot, um, and, and I want to thank you all. Um, I knew you'd do great. You did do great. Um, and, and thank you again. Hopefully we'll do this again sometime, you know, uh, and uh, that's about it. And we finish on time. Thank you, Steve. Oh, Thanks thank for you, having Steve. us. Terrific. Great fun. pleasure. Thank you. Bye, Thanks everybody. everybody. Bye. Thank Bye. Bye everybody. Thank you. Thank you.